Yo, my people, welcome to another episode of Updates with Bounce in Dubai. Now, guys, listen, I'm going to be doing recaps once a month. I'm going to move this over to TikTok because that's where it needs to be. And you're going to see me doing a lot of live streams, Twitch, TikTok, YouTube live. Stay tuned, guys. I've got three topics that we're going to speak about today, man. I'm ready to go. The first topic, I see a post about Young T and Bugsy. Big shout out to Young T and Bugsy. Big shout out to Beans, their manager. And that song that went viral, the song that has got over 400 million streams, guys. Look, we can count the streams on Spotify. God knows what happened even with the PRS. They said they didn't get paid. Them saying that they didn't get paid, it means they didn't get paid. And it's so easy. Everyone's in the comments and they're like, you should have read your contract. What do you mean you didn't get paid? And listen, you see in the music world, yeah? You gotta understand. You see when you're talented and you're young and you sign a record deal when you're young and you get given a solicitor, a lawyer, a music lawyer through someone in the industry. Listen, 99% of them, they all work together. They're all friends. They could all advise their client different. Like, say for instance, you did have a lawyer and you read through your contract. And just say you're going through thousands of pages. You're going through your contract, you're going through thousands of pages. And there's little blueprints in your contract. And your music lawyer is explaining to you. You don't know who your music lawyer is, by the way. You get me? You're new to this music world. You don't know what's going on in the music. But they explain to you every bit. And you're new to music. You don't even probably understand what it means. Even if you're answering what it means, you still don't understand what it means. But let's say you're in the music. You sign your deal. You've been in a deal from, I don't know, you might be in a 100k per mixtape deal for five years. You've been signed from early, just for example. And then from that tune, you've connected. You've gone viral. You've, you're hitting billboards in America. In America, yeah? Levels, yeah? This is one of the biggest songs to come out of the UK from our culture, by the way, guys. Surely, surely from that song, you will have recouped your money. Surely there should be capital for you. I keep on hearing the same stuff over and over again when it comes to record labels not paying artists. Big shout out to Crepton Conan. Big shout out to Crepton Conan. Do you know why I say that? Because they didn't get paid. They signed a deal. They didn't get paid in music, but they didn't go on the internet and speak about it too much. They just kept quiet. They kept their head down and they look where they are now. Powerful businessmen doing amazing things. There's some people that don't even know that they even did music. They know them from the rap game. Yeah, it's a big shout out to them, but there's a lot of artists and I see a few comments and this is obviously everyone has an opinion and a lot of people don't even know what goes on inside the music industry. And listen, you know me, I'm that guy. The people that work at the labels, you got the Austins, you got the Rickies, you got the Lunits, you got all of these guys, they're goats, amazing. You see, when you have teams like them, trust me, trust me. And there's many more, there's many more. But you see, if you've got them and your team, you sign that deal, but you just read the contract. But what I'm saying is when you're young, sometimes you can sign things or you can do things and there's small little blueprints in there and you might not get paid and you might be answering for your payment and there'll be a possibility where the label has just robbed you. And we always break it down. It's not the people that works in the labels. They do amazing jobs, amazing jobs, but it's not them. You got your Nemats that does an amazing job. You got your Rians that does it. You got the list goes on. They all do amazing jobs. I want to make this clear. When they sit down and they work on your projects, they're dope. They're all dope. It is the business structure. It's the structure of the labels. Is it's before their time. Do you get it? It's before their, their time. And the most annoying thing is these people that work at the labels, they work in the industry, like they, they, they don't even get paid what they're worth. They should be getting paid way more. They should be getting paid way more for the job that they do. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You saw last week, you saw that JME broke it down what you get paid on Spotify. Like what Spotify pays to artists. Crazy, like you have to like, million of streams is like, Four thousand pounds, something like that, like literally. So you know there's some serious money in in the music world. You know that. So even when it comes to the structure of paying the staff, they don't even get looked after like that. But obviously, you have to big them up. They love their job. They're, they're growing the culture. They're supporting the culture. Big shout out to them. But yeah, man. Obviously, sometimes 
artists go missing. Sometimes they go quiet. Sometimes you can release a song and sometimes you scratch your head and you realize, oh, why has this artist fallen off so bad? And sometimes it's down to the artist, but a lot of the times it's actually down to the system of the labels. You can get put on the shelf. You can get put on the shelf. It's just simple as that. And I don't think a lot of people, a lot of art artists are educated. They're not educated. No one's educated. No one, people just think, see a song, do a song, do a beat, record it, that, it goes out, upload it to that. They don't know the business side of it. They don't know things that could really cost them. So guys, man, if you're an artist, wake up and really learn the business side of music or you will become unstuck. Look at me. I became unstuck. That's it. But I learned and now I'm here to try to lead you guys down the right direction. Simple as that. I've got an announcement to make coming soon. Stay tuned. Something that you don't want to hear because for three and a half years, <laughs> It's been a long time. Now look, moving on now, guys. I want to talk about something that I spoke about last week about the black culture and about the Asian community. Now guys, big shout out to my brother Made You Think every single time. But let me break this down to you guys, yeah? I'm only talking my truth. I'm speaking my truth. One of the men that messaged me on Instagram and he messaged me and he said, Bouncer, you know I always support you with everything you do. Why do you have such a negative opinion recently when it comes to the black community i said to him brother it's not that i have a negative opinion but have you seen what they done to me bro did you see it like i had to break it down i had to send voice notes i broke it down to him i said to him bro like everyone goes through their own traumas so if your own people hate you or you can feel hated by your own people more than the love then obviously man's going through man's own trauma and i can speak about it it's my it's my own opinion it's not down to you lot do you know what i'm trying to say so the, the world saw what man done with man the world saw it is in your face but somehow the brother said what he said and the facts on the matter when you saw the actions the one thing that got said all of a sudden it was like yeah man man took advantage of a vulnerable person like, that's what a man said. Remember, black people's the ones that's behind the Plus 44 podcast. The black people that's behind them, bro. Like, they're the ones that's editing it. They're behind it. They're signing it off. You get it? They're the ones that's paying these blog pages to post it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? These are the narratives that are getting built. So it took, man, a whole year. Yeah? Remember, it's the black culture that cancelled me. You lot cancelled me. You know, like, you lot cancelled me. That time, you lot cancelled me. What did I do? I left Insta. I went over to TikTok. And 97% there. If the black culture is over there, it's not the black culture, you know what I'm trying to say. It's just the 97%. Do you know what I'm trying to say? People that are, they think that TikTok's for kids and, do you know what I mean? Dancing when <laughs> there's, there's more to TikTok. We built Sunday Smoke. Big shout out to Tyrone, my black brother. We built Sunday Smoke. It went viral. The community supported. Yes, the community was speaking about it. Oh, little man, little man, little man. But slowly they started to see my character see to check to see how man is like you know you know sometimes energies don't lie you can see someone within their self to see if they're a bad man person anyway built up a community got accepted into the community and was building mind my own business a year later little man comes back oh cool people got in his ears basically said that it was cap posted it guess what all these other these blog pages not many of them wanted to post everyone's quiet oh shit like big shout out to made you think though he posted you guys bear them they didn't post everyone was quick to chat shit but no one didn't post then you get me but come to the law you know the truth comes out so then anyway that left a bad taste in my mouth because i was thinking look at this you get me you're seeing a brother doing well you're sick to your stomachs maybe i don't know where man come from i get it you're sick to your stomach i get it so i blame that on my culture because it starts from the culture in it and then you have people that's not part of the culture talk about it and then that's what happens in it so then obviously but i act on the people that have me in it so yeah people say oh yeah these things happen in ev every culture so i'm just letting you know i'm letting you know my truth i'm letting you know that all the asian brothers that have been around or who I'm around they're the brothers that ha has me they're the brothers that still got me there's the brothers that's helped me might not for you but it's happened for me there's, there's just a difference I've, I've, I've still got a selection of my the man them that I'm around but I'm just saying that's it so with me I get it man I fully get it but Everyone always has an opinion. Everyone's always triggered when man talk about race. And I'll just let you lot know, guys, again, I am a Muslim before any skin color. And I know that's gonna trigger a lot of you lot. I know you're gonna say how bad man saying that, but listen, 
Your skin colour is not getting you to heaven, bro. Your religion is. Whatever religion that you believe in, that you believe is the one, that's your religion, not your skin colour. Everyone's too invested on whites against blacks and blacks against whites and this happened and that happened. Like, and I always say, we have black people, we don't like each other. But what do I still do? Like, I still do things that you lot don't even see. You lot be like, bounce is wrong, but you don't see. I do things for the younger generation. I do things for the black community. And guess what, guys? Talking about another thing, UK gossip. You know, they're the quick to post. Wait for Bounce's downfall, yes, post, you get me? There was another one of them little devils that posted me with this whole little man thing, but when the truth came out, there was no post. But anyway, guys, obviously, you lot don't see the, the things that I do. You don't see them. You lot are so small-minded, you get me? Until it's your family member that's involved in it. So guys, look, I know a lot of you lot have seen the Honey Trap interview, yeah, with Andre. And it's always gonna be controversial. There's always gonna be myths. There's always gonna be people voicing their opinions. You know why? Because growing up, everything that you lot have seen, a documentary that's not true, a film that's not true. Like, it's not true. Do you know what I'm trying to say, guys? And that interview, man, was very sensitive. Man, was very, but I'll be honest with you, I have a platform for the youth. And guys, girls, unfortunately, when you're from the ends and everyone that has their kids, they've got your, you got your sons, you got your daughters, they're growing up to 12, 13, and right now, you don't even know what they're doing. They're out playing. 15, they're playing or whatever. They got knives on them. You don't even know where they are. If you don't, if they don't watch things like that, guys, yeah? If they don't watch things, real life things like that, what do you think is gonna happen? Maybe your son or your daughters sat down and watched that. Maybe you sent that to your son and daughter and you told them to watch that. And you sit and you tell them, listen, if you don't stop what you're doing, this could happen to you. And they actually sit down and watch that. They realize and they think, raw. Maybe that might save that one person. And guys, look, I want all of you lot to go and Google Honey Trap Murder. Just go and Google it. The reason why I say go Google Honey Trap Murder because we can't always go on like everyone is a law-abiding citizen. This we're dealing with black and black crime here, which we're trying to we're trying to help. Everyone needs to play their bit into the community, and it's all well and good. Everyone on Twitter under the comments just posting what you want to post, but. If you're not doing petitions and all these things, your opinion don't mean anything. You will post what you're gonna post right now. Tomorrow, the next day is forgotten about. No one cares, everyone has bills to pay. And that's just me just being very clear and just saying how it is. It took Idris Elba, yeah, to start doing a petition. It took Idris Elba to do a petition. Look what's happening. But let me guess, did you not sign that petition? Did you? Did you not support it? Did you not even know what was going on? Everyone, ha everyone wants to voice their opinion online. Everyone wants to tweet things on Twitter. Everyone wants to write things in the comment. Go and do something then. Like, make a change, guys. If you're so bothered and you really care, make a change. Because them comments, what you're putting online, no one don't care. No one's not bothered. Wake up. People, black people, are getting found dead in the river, guys. Why are we speaking about this? But we're speaking about someone eating arsehole. Make it make sense. You see me? I'm not a fence sitter. I'm not here to be liked. I know my intentions. And I'm going to finish it just like that, man.